Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the XXL Skymaster Hawk. Stay tuned, we'll roll that intro and we'll get back into this plane. All right guys, this episode, we are going to be joining the fuselage and working on small details. Uh, last episode, we finished the wings. Um, we got the fuselage rear parts joined together. That's all done. So now we are ready to start moving forward. We do still have our startup tray as well too that we need to think about, but that's part of the small details that we'll be doing on this aircraft. So lots to do still, but we're making some great headway on this, uh, this monster plane. So thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, many of my viewers are not, hit that subscribe button down below and uh, let's dive back into this thing. We got lots to do. All right, guys. Just playing out, uh, playing around with equipment layout here, and uh, I've been, I've had this stuff sitting in there for a couple days, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another tray in the back part of this aircraft, and the reason for the other tray is to mount our air things to it, and uh, mount any of the other miscellaneous little items that we need to mount to it. So I, I kind of want to put our air system here, just so it's a little bit more centralized but uh, that's not set in stone yet, so just thinking at this point. Now, if we do join these fuselage pieces together, we still have great access back here, so really it's not an issue. I'm just trying to think if, if there's anything else that I need to do in there, but I do need to do things like attach fuel tubing onto the, the tanks and things like that. We've already done the vent lines, uh, but if we uh, want good access to be able to tie wire the fuel tubes, uh, we need to do that. This tie gun is here just still from the test. Uh, we will have to run some more wires and things backwards back here, but uh, I don't think that'll be an issue if we have the front fuselage mounted. So anyways, that's kind of my thought process behind all of this. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to bolt the turbine in, but we got good access afterwards, so no problem if we just do that later on. So I think the next step is we will deal with the fuel line here and smoke feed line. Once that's done, we're probably going to bolt that fuselage on. Let's do it. All right, guys, making a little bit of progress here. I thought I was just going to bolt the uh, fuselage pieces together, but instead I wanted to make sure I got this plate uh, the back plate here done before we bolt them together. Just easier to work on having this, uh, this view through the back. So I kind of planned this out uh, strategically with a gap in between all of our, uh, our air cylinders. The air cylinders are siliconed in place, so those are curing right now, uh, but they're, they are solid. Uh, the gap in the center is for all of our wiring and tubing and everything to run to. And then we're going to have two UATs on the system. So this one is for the fuel system. So this is a high flow uh, model aviation products UAT. These are made in Canada. Very nice. My favorite because they're affordable. They are lightweight, they're simple, and they just work. Uh, we're also going to have another one mounted right here. It's going to be one of the two ounce sizes. So this is a four ounce. It's going to be half this size. Uh, the width stays the same. It's just the, the bottle changes a little bit in height. And that one's going to be mounted right here. And that is for the smoke system. So we minimize the amount of uh, puffs when, we, uh, when we're running the smoke system. And again, we're leaving that gap down the middle. And uh, our vents for our main tank are going to come out right here on this side and the vent for the smoke tank is going to come out right there on that side so it'll be a nice fit right here and then our tray itself comes back to this spot right there all right guys and today's video has been sponsored by kst servos now they've got a new servo coming out and uh, I jumped at the opportunity to get a couple demo servos to show you guys and share with you this new servo. So they sent me a box with, I think, three servos in it. So let's open these things up and uh, take a look at them. 
All right, so I don't have tons of experience with KST servos, but the last aircraft I built that we used them on was the Mibo Glider and uh, was really happy with them. Awesome, got another hat, thank you. KST, that's great, appreciate it. And here is the brand new servos. So these are the X1208 brushless servos. Now these have not been released yet to the market when you're watching this video. I think it's gonna be the 7th of December when this video comes out and uh, they were released yesterday. So they're brand new to the market. Uh, let's take a look at these servos and I'll show you guys a quick rundown of them. All right guys, so a couple cool features about these servos, uh, brushless motor, they're programmable. Uh, torque on these things up to 9.3 kilograms, and that's at uh, three, uh, two cell LiPo, so 8.4 volts. And uh, if you run these things off of a six volt system, they're 6.3 kilograms, so really, really strong tiny little servos, really fast as well too. They're actually designed, uh, I guess, somewhat specifically for a uh, 380 to 420 size heli uh, cyclic servos. And uh, when you have a cyclic servo that is fast and also strong, really, really nice. Now the case on this thing, they're all aluminum. So the top case is aluminum, the bottom case is aluminum, and uh, very, very impressive little, uh, <laughs> little servos. These are actually really nice. I would uh, really not hesitate to use these on a jet for like a door uh, on one of our larger jets. But uh, let's get this guy uh, mounted with an arm so we can actually visually see how fast these things are. So before we do that, a couple cool points that I really want to share with you about this servo. So we've talked about the torque, the speed, really, really fast. Uh, working frequency, it's a 333 kilohertz uh, servo. Travel angle, plus minus 50 degrees. Temperature range, minus 20 to plus 65. Soft start programmable. I'm interested to see if this is uh, soft start. So, and the big cool thing is a brushless motor, which is nice. We'll plug this into channel one. Now this is a two cell LiPo battery. Uh, it's only at 7.67 volts, so it's kind of right in the middle. Uh, the plug on these things, uh, they're a, a dark plug, dark wiring, but our signal wire is labeled with the white line. So let's plug this guy in and see what, uh, what it looks like. Yeah, very fast. <laughs> Fast little servo, that's really nice. Wow, that's really cool. Beautiful. Let's see what kind of torque it has. Yeah, good power for a little micro servo, that's great. Very nice. All right guys, so down below in the, uh, the description of this video, I will put some links to KST's website and also this specific servo. Now I'm not a KST dealer, I'm an MKS dealer, I'm a JR dealer, but uh, it's kind of nice when you get the opportunity to test these new products that are brand new on the market. And sometimes they fit within the scope of work that I usually can complete, which is, you know, typically turbine aircraft, but we do lots of different aircraft here. So having these on the, on hand, ready to use, and also be able to test them is a really good benefit. So if you guys are interested in these little tiny servos, check out the links below. Thanks for uh, KST for sending these servos and uh, pretty cool to see these new products. So thank you. Now I was painting the trays, that's the new one, that's the original stock one, and the original stock one started to have some interference with the different materials, so I ran out of paint for the front one, so we're going to have to get more paint for that, but uh, the back one is good to go at this point, and uh, you can see there I made it the same width as the front one. So now with that stuff done, we are ready to bolt this fuselage together, which is very exciting. Um, once that's, uh, that's together, then we'll start organizing the UATs and start again working our way forward with things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get this bolted on there. So the next view you see, we'll have a nose attached to this aircraft. And there we are. The fuselage is joined, all three pieces 
and it looks awesome. And I tell you, this thing is massive. <laughs> I thought this would be the same kind of length as the uh, uh, PC21 in the back. No, it is huge. Wow. So let's measure this thing. So from the back of the fuselage, the, uh, the elevators actually stick back another four inches. So from the back of the fuselage to the tip of the nose, plus four inches, we are 10 feet, two inches long, 122 inches long. Wow, that is a big, big plane. <laughs> all right, so we got all six bolts in there with washers. Uh, Skymaster didn't include the right washers, so I had to find some washers, but I have spares. So we're bolted in there, six big bolts, and uh, we used red Loctite on all of those guys. Now there's also two bolts here, just small ones, that go into the, um, the intakes here. There's a little bit of a gap, so once we bolt that in, that'll suck down that gap a little bit. So need to get that done, but there is a shot of the fuselage. All right, guys, just making some slow headway here. Uh, we've got the UAT mounts mounted, one and two. They're glued to the bottom of the fuselage. We've got our vents run and our vent lines run as well, too. We've got them held in place with keepers, and that looks good. Um, the tray layout is done. Now, they're not painted 100% yet, so I, again, I ran out of paint, so I've got to pick up some more, but uh, the layout is now done and uh, looking good. Uh, the Beast has been mounted as well too. We actually, I decided to put it in now because we needed the weight in the back end of the plane. Um, with the way this, the former and system and the doors and all that is laid out, uh, ideally I wanna have this brace sitting right kinda here, but there's no structure in the aircraft, so uh, we have to run it back there at that rear former. And then I didn't wanna also, if I would have opened my stand more, that would have been fine, cause then we would have been on the front side of the doors. But the reason I don't wanna do that is cause then it gets too low and it's not a comfortable working height. So right now it's at a comfortable working height, which for me is more important. And uh, we're balanced quite well right now with the, uh, the turbine in the back. And then I've just got the stool sitting under the front nose but it does take quite a bit of force to, uh, to push that nose down and lift the rear end off the stand. Okay, so kind of working on layout for the startup tray. So just giving that some initial thought and uh, doing layout on that. So nothing set in stone yet. I'm just kind of figuring that out in my mind. Did a couple things here on the the hatch. So this is the main hatch that's going to come on and off between flights. So I opened up these front vents and I also opened up the uh, scale starter exhaust vent. And you can see there, nice and smooth and uh, worked out good. And then I'll give you this shot. So there's the, uh, the vents opened up and then the starter exhaust vent. So did what I was uh, planning on doing, opened that up, ended up using a drum sander on this, so the, the little Dremel uh, uh, drums, like the sandpaper drums, and uh, cut most of it away with my carbide bit and then used the drum sander. Then what I did was I built, just out of a scrap piece of, uh, I think 332nds ply that I had, and uh, I actually cut this back section off because there was a bit of a cut out there but shape-wise it works well. And I also have it angled kind of like this. And uh, the high saw is still not feel fully cured, but we've uh, got it glued in place and it's curing. And then I did paint it black so it looks 
like the scale starter exhaust. So we could have just done a hole in there, but when you look in there, you'd be looking straight down at probably the tail cone of the turbine. And this way it's kind of a scale touch and uh, also very functional to allow the beast to breathe. This is the underside of the front tray. Uh, you can see the where we had the paint uh, issue. Uh, just to talk a little bit more about this, so what happened was I put like a trim clad primer or what I can't remember the name of it on here, painted it with the Tamiya colors and everything worked out good, uh, totally fine. And then what happens is you, a couple days later, I put a different color paint over top of this and it just softens everything up. So the original paint basically separates from the primer. It's a really weird reaction. Uh, anyways, all I've done here is flip this tray over. Doesn't matter, but we're going to uh, going to repaint the, the now the top side of this tray. So this tray, because it is, uh, I don't know what size it is, but it's not aircraft ply, it's the stock ply. Doesn't bolt at the front, it just slips into grooves. This has quite a bit of uh, flex to it when it's installed. Now our gyro is gonna be mounted to this with our, our uh, central box and all that type of stuff. So what I wanna do, and I, we, we could put the gyro back here on the rear tray, which is totally fine. But uh, what I wanna do is I wanna reinforce this tray. So I've got some, some maple here. Uh, this is like quarter inch by one type stuff. And uh, what I'm gonna do is glue this to the back side, just two strips along the length here. And uh, we're gonna do that to help stiffen everything up. So I'm just gonna sand this out, glue it in place, and then we'll be good. All right, guys, so we're just working on the uh, organization stuff so far. Now the, uh, the startup tray here is created. Uh, now I put a lighting switch on here, an on off switch. I'm used to doing this with the older controller and also with the SkyMaster controllers, but we actually don't need this, I just figured out. So I'll share with you why. So the new Unilight controller, the Economy, I think the older one needed a switch. But uh, anyways, the new Unilight controller, it's not parasitic. So it actually turns off when there's no signal to the radio system. So when I turn this guy on, which I just did, you can see the blue light come on. And when we turn it off, so I'm turning it off now, the blue light turns off. So that's a cool feature of the new Unilight controller. I uh, definitely like that because it saves having one of those switches in the system. And I'm not sure what you guys are talking about, but uh, there's no hole there for a lighting system switch. What hole? There's just a Cortex Demon sticker. All right, so routed a bunch of the, uh, the fuel tubing and all that stuff, so that's all routed. Uh, of course, we hooked up to the fuel system UAT. Uh, here's our line that's gonna feed our turbine, and the pump's gonna be sitting right down here, so it's gonna pull nice and short from the UAT. And then this is our lines that are going to our smoke uh, system bubble trap as well. All right, so this is pretty much the, uh, the layout here. Um, I think we're happy with this and everything. Next thing we need to do is, because we just put these extensions on, uh, we're gonna add some connectors on this side. And uh, the whole point of these things that are on here, the Cortex, this plugs into the programming port on the Cortex. So if you needed to do your programming, all you have to do is put your bind plug in here and you can get into the programming of the Cortex rather than having to take the cockpit out. And then of course our GSU plug, which is for the turbine, the data terminal and uh, our air fill valves. Now the fuel fill, that's gonna be the actual fuel fill line right here. This is our smoke system on off. So when you are filling the smoke system, there'll be another Festo or Tigon uh, line right beside here on the side of the fuselage. When you're filling the smoke system, this is off. When you wanna run the smoke system, that's on. So that is the uh, coming back, going right to the, uh, the smoke injector valve that's gonna be there. All right, so we've got the rear tray is 100% complete. We've got our lines run for our fill lines. We've got our smoke fill line right there. And that is uh, just the Tigon line held in with the, uh, the clips. We've got our actual smoke line coming down and it goes to the injector tube, which is the style that goes underneath the turbine clamp. So that is uh, all installed and done. 
So this part looks good. We've got our wires run forward that we need to, uh, to run forward. So now we've got a couple things we can start working on for the front section. So we could either start working on the layout of the equipment or we could start fitting the cockpit. Now the thing about the cockpit that I want to do is I want to make it all one piece or two separate pieces and I want to have a little shelf that comes out about half an inch underneath this lip and then the cockpit actually just sits in there. So it's gonna be a nice easy in, easy out, and uh, it's not gonna be a struggle to get that cockpit in and out as the goal. So in order to do that, we will need to build a little bracket shelf. Uh, this side's gonna be a little bit easier because we don't have anything going on on this side other than our linear actuator is gonna be right in this area. This side is a little bit more of a struggle because we've got our actuator for our lock on the side, which is a servo actuator. So we've got a bit of a, a more technical job on this side. And then we've got our whole slide system underneath the, the lip. So we've got to think about that. We need to get that servo mounted. So what we'll probably do is start working on the mechanics of, of everything up front here before we start doing the equipment layout. That way we can have all of our lines and everything run. And then we can start working on those trays afterwards. We do have the trays all painted and ready to go. Now we will be setting this aircraft up with three batteries. So we're gonna have two receiver batteries going to the central box, one turbine battery. Now we do have accessories that are going to be run off each of these batteries. So our turbine and our air pump are gonna be run off of the one battery. The other battery we're gonna run our central box and our lighting kit off of. And then the other battery, we're gonna run our central box and our smoke pump off of. So that's how we're pairing up the battery system in this aircraft, color-coded connectors as well. These are the new connectors that are available on my website. So these are the surface mounted connectors and uh, these are gonna work well for this setup because our batteries are sitting right in those front pockets beside the front gear. Right on these little shelves right here is the plan and then those leads will just come and plug in to the surface mounted leads. So next thing to do is start dealing with the mechanics of everything. So I think the first thing we'll do is mount our servo for the lock and then we will start tackling the cockpit. All right, so we moved into the cockpit here and the first thing I did was mount the servo. That's gonna be operating the canopy lock. So. What we did here was use the stock servo mount. I'm assuming that's what uh, needed to happen here. But uh, either way, we're putting a servo here. I think there's an air cylinder that's supposed to fit on there, but servo is better. Uh, we used the round servo horn and we reduced the travel to about 50% each direction. And anyway, so right now that's in the off or open direction and uh, it rotates to the exact same position on the other side, and that locks the, uh, the canopy closed. So this has been high salt to the side of the fuselage, and we're just letting that cure. That will get painted gray. And now we're moving into fitting the cockpit. So if you keep the opening distance here the same, uh, we'll just say you have 200 millimeters here. What ends up happening is you basically have to chop almost all of your lip off of your cockpit. So um, that's not gonna work, especially when you get to the front section here, uh, you don't have that much to get rid of. And there's the same on this side. So we need more of a lip for this whole system to work properly. So we've got the option of removing some material from the actual opening here. So our, our slide is in about six millimeters. This side, there's nothing to interfere with. So what we're doing is we've marked the five millimeter mark here on the, the cockpit opening, and we're gonna take that much material off of both sides. That's gonna make sure that we have five millimeters more of this overhang to grab onto our holding system. All right, so we removed that five millimeters off each side, sanded this down with a sanding block, and we gained a centimeter of spacing here, which is perfect. So marked the cockpit tubs. 
So we're 21 centimeters edge to edge is our measurement. You can see there 21 centimeters edge to edge. So we carried that down to the end, uh, made a measurement there, and then drew a straight edge all the way down the cockpit. Now the opening here is 21 centimeters all the way back. So we're consistent all the way through, which is nice. And then the front cockpit tub, looks like the tub's a little bit narrower than the back one. So we gained a little bit more of an overhang here. But again, we marked that out straight, 21 centimeters all the way through. Now we did carry that through to the front. This will probably end up having to cut that off around the tub. Um, forward of this location here, everything's buried underneath the front canopy glass. So we'll have to play around with this once we get it uh, trimmed. So next thing we're gonna do, take the Dremel with a fiber disc and we'll trim this off. When you're trimming these Skymaster cockpits, don't use scissors, don't use a Dremel, use, a, use the discs and you'll minimize the amount of damage to them. They are brittle. These ones fortunately are a little bit thicker. Uh, it seems like they've, they've used thicker material on these bigger tubs. So we'll cut this and then we'll see how it fits. We'll talk a little bit about the canopy now. This thing is an absolute nightmare to, uh, to install. So there's a piano wire that goes all the way through that carbon on that side, which is the hinge side. Now the problem is the piano wire has to go in right there. Now I've made a slot to hold an L bend, but there's no way to actually put the piano wire in and have everything line up properly. So you can see a bit of a hole right there. So what we had to end up doing was feed the piano wire through the back hatch to get everything lined up. And uh, even then it was a nightmare because it's got to go on a bit of an angle and nothing lined up in the front here. So it took probably a good solid hour, hour and a half, I think, to get everything done. Uh, we have to leave this down right now because that back pivot point came unglued from the fuselage. So there's high saw on that getting it all lined up. So this is kind of at a standstill right now, which is why we're moving on to the equipment trays. But this is an absolute nightmare. We're gonna fill that hole in uh, that we created there to get the, the hinge wire in. Uh, basically, if this uh, canopy ever needs to come off, uh, it's not going to. It's, it's a permanent part of the structure now. Uh, yeah, so fortunately it opens up all the way and it's, it's nice and solid. So we do have our, our wood pieces that are designed to hold the cockpit made up for that side. They're sitting inside right now waiting to be glued, but of course we can't do that till tomorrow till that cures 100%. But that is definitely a struggle. All right guys, working on tray layout here and this is, uh, as per usual, this is a lot of thought that goes into this. So this is kind of the layout that we have right now. Reason for the air stuff going right here is this tray is lifted up higher than the front tray. So there's a nice nice path right underneath this tray to run airlines and stuff to. Uh, it's gonna be fairly serviceable uh, having the air stuff here and then as it ties into all the tanks and everything, that's gonna be underneath this back tray. I think the air compressor is gonna be underneath the tray just to keep things nice and clean. And uh, the front tray is pretty, pretty decent, not a lot going on here, just the Cortex and the central box. Now Cortex, the standard method would be like this. And uh, you wanna have the output plugs facing forward. We can switch that around too and have it uh, flipped around like that. That's a possibility. Um, yeah, so that's the tray layout that we're thinking about. All right guys, and it is time for tip time brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. This is a good one. I've talked about it before, but it's, uh, it's definitely a good one. All right, so what we're doing is gluing in the ledges for the cockpit. Now what I've done here is I've taken a spare piece of the cockpit that we cut off. This is the double layer one, so with the top and the actual cockpit tub. And I'm using this as my guide for getting that flush with the top lip. <clears throat> now something like this, it's really tough to get this into place and have it stay where you want it to be because you can't clamp it and this uh, canopy needs to be closed when this stuff is curing. 
Otherwise, it, you run the risk of having it cure at a funny angle. So what I'm doing here is, and, the, and it won't stay with the high saw by itself. So what I'm doing here is just getting it lined up where I'm happy. And I take a little bit of medium CA and we just wick it into the joint there. Now, if there's any excess, we can sand that off afterwards. This is basically your clamp is the way to think about this. So I'm just checking the fit and the spacing. And then we take a little bit of kicker, spray it on there. And the back side's done. Now I'll do the same thing to the front side. Again, you don't need much, just a little, little drop, a little corner filled in. And again, you can basically get rid of the CA when you're done. Like we've got a little bit here, a little bit there, and we can just dremel those out if we need to. And then now we can check, confirm that we're happy with that which we're good. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm inserting this piece and I'm having it flush with the, the ledge that the, uh, of the cockpit opening. So now what we're doing is we're letting those cure. We want to make sure we close this and have it latch so there's nothing funky going on there for, uh, to affect the canopy opening. All right, guys, so we're just plugging away here at the cockpit stuff and the canopy. Uh, you can see there, I'm gonna open this up for you so you can see, but we've got the actuating arm installed. And that actuating arm is for the canopy open close. So it's pretty straightforward that this was the arm for it because it had the shape for the carbon and the, the rod and all that stuff. So we're going to uh, be attaching our linear actuator to that now. You want to make sure like normal you keep good geometry here so we're perpendicular to our hinge line, right? Um, so that is, uh, that's important to make sure that that works properly. And our linear actuator is going to be coming down at a bit of an angle towards the, uh, the opening here. So um, that's fine. That's uh, something we can deal with to make sure we've got good geometry. You can use strong parts. Now I've already just glued these guys on the other side. And this is a, again going to be the cockpit uh, rests that are on this side. So the way I designed this one is because we have to keep it clear of our actual uh, canopy lock. So we've dropped these down and those are dropped down enough that we can put a vertical piece on there and box it in like that. And we're out about our five millimeters, which is perfect. And then we can have our cockpit sit right on that little uh, lip right there. So that is uh, about the best way that I could think of doing it. I uh, used 20 minute high saw on all this stuff and uh, just waiting for it to firm up a little bit. And the next step is we are going to do the verticals. Now we're just going to match our lengths here, leaving our space open for the access to the servo right there. And uh, yeah, just uh, continuing on. All right, a little more progress done here on the front trace. We've got our uh, XT60 plugs. Uh, as, as I normally mention, these are available on the website in black, red, and gray. So we've got our XT60 plugs all separated here and all of our wiring is set up now and done. So we've got turbine and air, uh, central box and lights, central box and smoke. And uh, we've run the power leads up to the central box created the uh, the ends with uh, my special tool that I have and hot glue and then if you look on the underside man that's ugly uh, if we look on the underside here we've got all of our connections done as well too so we've got one XT60 connector I think that's for the smoke pump and we've got this little guy for the light system and then we've got another XT60 for the air pump so this tray, other than uh, doing our wiring organizing and stuff, is pretty much done. We've got our, our uh, receivers and stuff to deal with. Um, all of our 
tubing here is done. Tried to keep it as tight and neat as possible. And uh, we've got one input for the air coming right to here. Now, one thing I like to do in this scenario is take my Robart hand pump and hook it up to this and pump it up and just to see and check if there's any leaks anywhere, leaks in the valve, stuff like that. So, but we're all good there and uh, that is good to go. On the, uh, the rear tray, uh, pretty straightforward. We didn't do a whole lot to here other than put our connectors on the Unilight system and then also the air pump there. So that portion is done as well. All right, so one of the last steps in getting this actually fitted is trimming the back of the cockpits. Now this is the front cockpit. It obviously slides in. Our back sits about here. Now you can't have these things overlap with the way I've designed it. So that front part there needs to butt in to the back of the front cockpit. Now, the white line there was initially my wavy line, just tracing the shape of this. So what I'm doing now is I run a straight edge across here. Now we're gonna make this a straight line. And then we're also going to make this a straight line. So when the rear one butts into the front, it'll sit nice and tight. All right guys, cockpit is all fit. Still have a couple things to do, obviously to finish it up, but she's, looking beautiful. So uh, we've got the front and the back here trimmed out. You can see there, it's all trimmed nicely. I'm also thinking about putting a cross brace across the front, but I have to check and see if I can still get this front cockpit out with a cross brace holding this guy in place. All right guys, I'll show you the final little touches we did here. So just put a little cutout in this back corner of the rear cockpit just so we could have our actuating system work. We may have to make that a little bit bigger, but right now it's enough so the canopy can close. And the other thing I looked at is putting a cross brace in front of the rear cockpit tub. The problem is you can't get the front tub out if that cross brace is there. Uh, thought about maybe attaching it to here and having little U's that slip in there. The problem with that is there, it's, it's awfully wide and it would be a pain to get out. So even more simple solution, we put a little quarter inch aircraft ply uh, triangle at the back here. And that clips on to our cockpit tub support right there. I uh, didn't do one on the other side because this angle that I've sanded out matches with the ridge line from forming the cockpit tub, which both tubs have. So this actually keeps that in place on this side because it can't move forward. Our front tub also has that same notch on the same right hand side, but the front tub is essentially held in from moving anywhere by that front brace. Now what happens when the cockpit canopy closes is it overhangs the supports by about half the width of the support and that really locks in the, the cockpit tubs from moving anywhere. So I'll show you guys how easy this is to get the cockpit tubs in and out. Now we will have two MR30 plugins for the pilot's moving heads, but uh, those will be fairly easy to access. But here is the process. So the front, just make sure it goes on top of the support. That slides into place. The back just drops into place. This is clipped in, that's clipped in. Can't go anywhere. Cockpit closes and she's solid. All right guys, and that is everything for this episode on the, uh, all the details we covered, but also the mainly the cockpit tub assembly uh, was the big part of it. So we're not complete yet. We'll wrap that up in the next video, but I think this video, it feels like it's really long to me. I'm not sure how long it's gonna be, but uh, happy with the way this turned out. It turned out exactly how I pictured it in my mind, which is definitely awesome. So. So guys, I think we're gonna wrap this build up probably in one more video. We've got to finish the cockpit tub. We've got to finish the light install. We've got to do all of our equipment install, which the equipment's kind of already installed, just needs to be plugged in and set up. So 
that's uh, that's what's left is a lot of detail work, which is great. So thanks guys for watching the videos. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up uh, if you liked it. And uh, if you're not a subscriber of the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. You can hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. Thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.